Hi, this is Shannon from No Shelf Control. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, for those of you who watched my previous vlog, you know that I was recently in Chicago and discovered a little bookshop called Bookends and Beginnings um, that I did a vlog on and introduced you to and showed you around the store. There were a few things and products that I highlighted um, as I was walking around the store, but I did not actually disclose what my book haul looked like. So now given I was flying from Columbus to Chicago, so there was only so much space in the luggage. So I came away with three books from this weekend. Um, two of them are signed, one of them is not. And I will tell you a little bit about each one and why I chose it. So, Let's get started. The first one is The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin. It is, it was published in 2018, January. It's 346 pages and it was published by G.P. Putnam Sons. So let's read a little bit about this. There are two things that I want to tell you. I want to read you a little bit of the synopsis, but I also wanna read you the shelf talker that actually got my attention and talked me into buying this book. Now, this is not one of the signed copies um, that I purchased. The signed copies I really purchased because they were both interesting to me and signed, but this one, the shelf talker really spoke to me. So there was an employee named Chris at Bookends and Beginnings who had written this shelf talker, and I wanna read it to you. So first, let's start with the synopsis. The synopsis says, if you knew the date of your death, how would you live your life? It's 1969 in New York City's Lower East Side and word has spread of the arrival of a mystical woman, a traveling psychic who claims to be able to tell anyone the day they will die. The gold children, four adolescents on the cusp of self-awareness, sneak out to hear their fortunes. The prophecies inform their next five decades. Golden boy Simon escapes to the West Coast, searching for love in 80 San Francisco. Dreamy Clara becomes a Las Vegas magician, obsessed with blurring reality and fantasy. Eldest son Daniel seeks security as an army doctor post 9-11. And bookish Varia throws herself into longevity research, where she tests the boundary between science and immortality. A sweeping novel of remarkable ambition and depth, the Immortalists probes the line between destiny and choice, reality and illusion, this world and the next. It is a deeply moving testament to the power of story, the nature of belief, and the unrelenting pull of familial bonds. So of course you know that I was drawn in by the family saga part. But here's what Chris from Bookends and Beginnings wrote about the Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin. He or she, I don't know if Chris is a man or a woman, wrote, I think this is the book to read in the early part of our year. This is beautifully written, lovingly detailed, a family saga about the four gold siblings, Simon, Clara, Daniel, and Varia. Is it irrational to continue on day after day as if forward is natural? Is magic only one tool among many for keeping one another alive? A story about the network of emotion that links us and keeps us holding on. So thank you to Chris from Bookends and Beginnings for writing that and putting it on the shelf talker next to this book. Um, it absolutely got my attention and I'm so excited to read about these four siblings and what happens to them over the course of time because they had their fortune told. So that is the first book that I wanted to talk about. The second book that I picked up is Liberation Day by George Saunders. So those of you who know George Saunders likely know him from Lincoln and the Bardo. Um, I loved Lincoln and the Bardo. It was so strange at the beginning and hard for me to get used to, but I stuck it out and I have not regretted that I did. Um, I actually listened to it on audiobook and um, the multi-voice cast with David Sedaris and a few other folks um, whose voices were recognizable to me, I just loved. But So that is George Saunders. This is Liberation Day by George Saunders. And you can see the little gold sticker I got a signed copy. Now I am a sucker for a signed book. Um, and so when I saw that this was both George Saunders and signed, I had to get it. So that's Liberation Day. Let's read a little bit about that one. Liberation Day Stories. 
MacArthur genius and Booker Prize winner George Saunders returns with a collection of short stories that make sense of our increasingly troubled world. His first since the New York Times bestseller and National Book Award finalist, 10th of December. The best short story writer in English, Time, is back with a masterful collection that explores ideas of power, ethics, and justice, and cuts to the very heart of what it means to live in community with our fellow humans. With his trademark prose, wickedly funny, unsentimental, and perfectly tuned, Saunders continues to challenge and surprise. Here is a collection of prismatic, deeply resonant stories that encompass joy and despair, oppression and revolution, bizarre fantasy, and brutal reality. Love Letter is a tender missive from grandfather to grandson in the midst of a dystopian political situation in the not-too-distant future, that reminds us of our obligations to our ideals, ourselves, and each other. Ghoul is set in a hell-themed section of an underground amusement park in Colorado and follows the exploits of a lonely, morally complex character named Brian, who comes to question everything he takes for granted about his reality. In Mother's Day, two women who love the same man come to an existential reckoning in the middle of a hailstorm, and in Elliot Spencer, our 89-year-old protagonist finds himself brainwashed, his memory scraped, a victim of a scheme in which poor, vulnerable people are reprogrammed and deployed as political protesters. Together, these nine subversive, subversive profound and essential stories coalesce into a case for viewing the world with the same generosity and clear-eyed attention as Saunders does even in the most absurd of circumstances. So this totally sounds like Saunders to me. Um, a little bit absurd, but really true to the human condition and the human story. Um, I'm just fascinated and can't wait to get into this. Um, I don't know the 10th of December, which I'm surprised about. Um, so it says that it was a New York Times bestseller and National Book Award finalist. I only know him for Lincoln in the Bar from Lincoln in the Bardo. So... Apparently, I missed 10th of December. If you did too, we'll have to go back and grab that one and check it out. If you've read 10th of December, please let me know in the comments and let me know if it was as good as Lincoln and the Bardo um, and whether I should double back and make sure I get that one. So that is Liberation Day Stories by George Saunders. Now, the third book I picked up in my haul from Bookends and Beginnings is Alone With You in the Ether. Now this author's name I'm not sure about. It looks like Olivia, but it ends with an E instead of an A. So I don't know if that's Olive, Olivier, I'm not sure. But we're gonna go with Olive Blake. Um, and she'll just have to forgive me if I've brutalized it. So this is Olive Blake, Alone With You in the Ether. And again, this is signed, um, so that's one of the reasons I picked it up. I think that signed books from an independent bookstore are always sort of a special little treat. Um, and so I grabbed this one when I saw it. Um, I've also heard very good things about it, so I'm excited to give it a try. Let me tell you a little bit about it. You know, I think that I forgot to tell you about the George Saunders book, that it was published in 2022, that it's 256 pages long and it was published by Random House. So that's the George Saunders book, Liberation Day. But now let's go back to Alone With You in the Ether. This one, Alone With You in the Ether. That one is, let's see here. It is 288 pages. You can see I shot for sort of slim volumes for my suitcase. Um, 288 pages by Tour Books and it was published November 29th of 2022, so not that long ago. Um, and my copy is signed by the author, and here's a little bit about it. Chicago sometime. Two people meet in the Art Institute by chance. Prior to their encounter, he is a doctoral student who manages his destructive thoughts with compulsive calculations about time travel. She is a bipolar counterfeit artist undergoing court-ordered psychotherapy. By the end of the story, these things will still be true. But this is not a story about endings. For Reagan, people are predictable and tedious, including, and perhaps especially, herself. She copes with the dreariness of existence by living impulsively, imagining a new, alternate timeline being created in the wake of every rash decision. 
To Aldo, the world feels disturbingly chaotic. He gets through his days by erecting a wall of routine, a backbeat of rules and formulas that keep him going. Without them, the entire framework of his existence would collapse. For Reagan and Aldo, life has been a matter of resigning themselves to the blueprints of inevitability until the two meet. Could six conversations with a stranger be the variable that shakes up the entire simulation? From Olive e. Blake, the New York Times bestselling author of The Atlas Six, comes an intimate and contemporary study of time, space, and the nature of love. Alone with You in the Ether explores what it means to be unwell and how to face the fractures of yourself and still love as if you're not broken. I love that. I'm so excited. Um, I love books that plumb, you know, the idea of mental health um, and the fact that both of these characters have something going on in the mental health spectrum um, and are trying to work through it and continue to have, you know, a progressively normal type of existence. Um, as somebody with mental health challenges of my own, I just love that that we're exploring this. So um, really interested to see how the relationship between the two of them um, comes into play and interested to find out how their mental health challenges really play out in these day-to-day -day situations and, and how they challenge them um, and how they help them grow. So I'm excited about this one. All right, so those are the three books that I picked up at Bookends and Beginnings in Evanston, Illinois. I hope that I have piqued your interest in at least one of them. Um, I will be back later this week with um, some more books that I got from Goodreads giveaways. Um, and we'll be looking to do some more vlogs in the very near future. So if you've gotten this far, please smash that subscribe button and the like button. Um, come back and join me again as we talk about books. Thanks.